Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 was everything I hoped for. Super happy to see my favorite team in the MCU got a satisfying conclusion, but at the same time, I'm sad this is the last time we see them, gonna miss the whole cast. This trilogy was amazing overall. Volume 1 for me is a 10 out of 10, Volume 2 is still great, maybe felt a little bit side storyish, but still had one of the best scenes in all of MCU, some of the best scenes in all of MCU. This Kraglin scene is one of my favorite. Scenes like this which evoke raw emotions out of us is what I think James Gunn's Guardian's biggest strength was and still lays in Volume 3. Volume 3, we finally get the previously teased backstory to Rock Dead on how he came to be like this. They do it through multiple backstory segments throughout the movie, giving us more and more of this tragic existence. I like that it was separate segments instead of giving it in all full one full segment. All I wanna say is this had some really dark scenes. I was not expecting it to go this dark. It was emotional and tragic, made me teary eyed. It has both cute and really dark moments. Talking about the backstory to Rocket, this also helps set up the villain of this movie, High Evolutionary. Chakpudi did an amazing job as him. I was really impressed by his performance even in Peacemaker. In this, he went way beyond my expectation. High Evolutionary as a villain, I don't think he's the best MCU villain, but I think he's the best Guardians villain. Because Guardians always had villains who were there to give a chance for the Guardians to get more focus or have more bond between them by overcoming the villain. This villain is also used like this, so as long as the Guardians are getting more focus, I have no complaint. I didn't want him to get Thanos level focus on the last movie of the Guardians. With the time he got, he already established as one of the most darkest villains in MCU. There is no justification on why he's doing it or anything, he is just evil. He's more of a mad scientist that has a fucked up goal than a really powerful villain like Ronan or Ego. Overall, he was a great villain. The Guardians, every member, even the newer member was given surprisingly good focus. Everyone had at least one moment of their own. This is exactly what I need for a final movie. See the team chemistry and how the family have grown together dealing with all the changes. This movie's Gamora was really different and the acting was done really well by Zoe Saldana to make it believable. And Gamora is sometimes used to show like a third person view of how the Guardians family care about each other and their bond, how strong their bond is. I also like the conclusion they've given to her. I was actually scared bringing her back would end up losing value of all Gamora's death. But no, Gunn did an amazing job on her arc. Drax and Mandis, that duo is always funny. The goof falls creating chaos in the group. Even at some serious moments too, like Drax especially, I really like Drax in this movie. I know the comic book version is really different, but I really like this MCU Drax. There's a line at the end of the movie that perfectly describes the MCU Drax. Dave Batista did an amazing job. Nebula as a character throughout every movie kept getting better and better. Karen Gillan is super talented and dedicated when it comes to her roles. Her journey from being a one odd villain to getting more and more character focused each movie. Now Nebula is like a permanent member of the family, she cannot be replaced. Groot to my surprise, he had his biggest moments, especially in terms of action in this movie. His powers were really showcased. Peter Quill is great as always, maybe a little bit depressed, but he's still the Quill we saw throughout the 10 years. Kraglin and Cosmo, the new members, even had great moments. Like, so every Guardian was given respect or given some focus before ending this journey. Now talking about action, I think this movie had one of the best action sequences in all of comic book movie. The Howway scene is what I can say without spoil. That sequence alone is really worth it. Like I'm seriously considering going again just to see that scene. The CG was also really great and like the recent trends. The music I'm not gonna talk about it. It was great and it is still great. Now for some negatives or rather I said nitpicks because I don't think these are that big of a problem. Adam Warlock, some people can feel disappointed by his role. I liked it because I was not expecting him to get that much focus in a Guardians final movie because the prefer first preference is them getting the focus. I would say he gets an introduction, like he's in the MCU now, now you can develop him in the future movie. He gets introduced, that's it. Some jokes may not hit but at the end of the day, humor is subjective so again, that's more of a nitpick. The epilogue of the movie could have had a little bit more time in my opinion. It's the last movie so I wanted the epilogue to be a little bit longer before ending this bittersweet emotional ride. I'm gonna miss this team. Overall, I'm really satisfied. This felt like coming out of after watching Endgame for the first time. Part of the journey is the end and it is here and it's a great ending. 
I'll give this a 9 out of 10. I know something's good when you feel satisfied, but also I don't want it to be the end. A legendary trilogy, overall 9.5 for the full trilogy. I know many of the recent ones were not great, but this doesn't even feel like a phase 4 or phase 5 movie. This just feels like a James Quinn's Guardians Volume 3, that's it, thing, just a self-contained story. Now does this movie give MCU a comeback? Is the MCU back? I actually don't think so. It is the opposite for me. After this satisfying conclusion to my favorite team, I feel like the MCU is actually over for me. I'm satisfied, I'm full. I will take this as an end to the whole MCU. That's it, if you liked it, give a like and subscribe.